Filipinos in five U.S. states are advised to brace for Hurricane Michael as it continues to threaten Florida and nearby areas. Beverly Saison tells us why. The Department of Foreign Affairs has alerted an estimated 232 members of the Filipino community in five southeastern states in the United States to make the necessary preparations for Hurricane Michael, which is expected to sweep through the area beginning Wednesday. In its report, the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C. said it has also advised the Filipino community in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina to monitor the movement of the storm and heed to the warning of local officials. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Hurricane Michael is currently a Category 1 hurricane but could become a Category 3 storm by Tuesday on the five-step Safford Simpson scale with winds of at least 60 km per hour. The hurricane is predicted to dump 4 to 12 inches of rain with life-threatening flash flooding. Storm surges of 2 to 12 feet are also expected. The embassy will also monitor developments and coordinate with the Filipino community in these areas. Mandatory evacuation orders and school closures were issued on Monday in the Florida Panhandle. President Donald Trump, who was in Orlando delivering an address to a global association of police chiefs, said the federal government was ready and urged residents to be prepared for the worst. Can you believe it? It looks like another big one, but we've handled them well. Florida Governor Rick Scott declared a state of emergency in more than 20 counties along the Florida Panhandle and Big Bend. Scott advised Gulf Coast residents to prepare for possible evacuation orders and he put more than 5,000 National Guard soldiers on alert. You've got to follow the weather, you got to listen when they say they're to evacuate, you've got to evacuate and don't, don't wait to the last minute uh, because this, this is in different than a lot of the storms that we've seen a lot since I've been governor. Michael battered parts of Mexico and Cuba with powerful winds and drenching rains on Sunday and into early Monday. After hitting Florida, the storm is seen to move northeast on Wednesday and Thursday along the Atlantic coast and batter the Carolinas, which are still recovering from Hurricane Florence last month. Beverly Sison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte confirms he is cancer-free just days after revealing he recently had a medical checkup. Duterte also reveals he is looking to replace some of his cabinet members. From Malacanang, Rosalie Cos tells us why live. Yes, Rosalie, good evening. Good evening, William Theo. Um, the president tells media during the chance interview in Malacanang that he is cancer-free after undergoing medical procedures such as colonoscopy and endoscopy. He says his biopsy results show no cancer in his system, but his doctors warned him over his drinking habit. Let's listen to the statement of the president. Was I found positive of cancer? Yes, sir. No, it's not the colon. It's my barret. Dito yan. It's badly eroded because uh, I was told to stop drinking years ago. But of late, uh, bumalik kasi ako. President Duterte also dispels rumors that he went to Hong Kong for a medical checkup, saying he was there to shop for clothes because he gained some weight. Duterte also answers some questions regarding the political plans of some of his cabinet members. He says among his officials who have confirmed to seek for an elective position in the 2019 midterm polls are Agrarian Reform Secretary Jan Castrillones, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque, Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano, Tesla Director General Giling Mamundiong, Special Assistant to President Bongo, and Political Advisor Francis Tolentino. He says he is now looking for individuals to fill in the soon-to-be-vacated post. The President also reveals he is eyeing to appoint Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo as the Press Secretary. The position was first offered to Roque, but he decided to find somebody else because the presidential because the presidential spokesperson expressed indecision on whether to run for the upcoming polls. Here's the statement of the chief executive. not 
target na rin ako na to take his place. I, I, I did my homework very fast. Yung sabi niya na hindi siya tatakbo-takbo. Namili na kaagad ako ng ano. Ng, siguro I'll uh, assign uh, in temporary or an added function. Total tiga announce mo lang yan. Si Sal Panelo. Uh, with all her sartorial elegance. Medyo maganda siguro tignan. That's the latest here in Malacanang. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Rosalie Cos, live from Malacanang. Supreme Court Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio believes without the International Criminal Court Treaty, the Philippines loses its legal deterrent against China. This is in the event it was proven that China was putting up naval bases in Scarborough Shoal and was invading Panatag Shoal. My Bermudez will tell us why. The Supreme Court has concluded the oral arguments on the petition questioning the validity of the country's withdrawal from the International Criminal Court or ICC. It was the Executive Department's turn to defend their side, arguing there are no explicit constitutional provision that state Senate concurrence to treaty withdrawal is required. Calida explained President Duterte did not violate the Constitution, but only exercised his power as the chief architect that crafts and implements foreign policy. But Justice Antonio Carpio said ICC treaty is the only legal deterrent that could have protected the country from China's abuses, specifically the Kampala Amendment which activated the court's jurisdiction on crimes of aggression. So if, for example, China invades Pagasa and puts up a naval base in Scarborough Shoal, we will not be able to sue President Xi Jinping and his military leaders because we would have withdrawn already from, uh, from the ICC, correct? I mean, we cannot take advantage of this legal defense anymore because we are withdrawing from the Rome Statute. Well, there might be uh, other international uh, treaties, Your Honor, that we can uh, use. Even Do you know we any? Uh, this is the only treaty in the world that holds military and political leaders of a state that commits the crime of aggression. Unfortunately, Your Honor, I don't have the encyclopedic mind uh, of uh, yeah, you, you discussed Justice your Leonard memo. Okay. The Philippines withdrew from the treaty in March 2018 via note verbal sent to the United Nations amid the preliminary examinations on Duterte's war on drugs by ICC prosecutor Fatou Bensuda. But according to a legal expert, whether or not the high court rule in favor of the president, investigations on his controversial drug war will continue. Kahit na sabi ng Supreme Court natin na uh, valid ang pag-withdraw ni Duterte, di ba? For any case filed against him for acts he committed, nung member pa tayo, continue yon. Ang, 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 ang consequence lang ng pag-withdraw ng ICC, uh, natin sa ICC, is any act committed after April or March, when we, to effect, is no longer covered. The petitions asking for the nullification of the withdrawal were filed by opposition senators and the Philippine Coalition on the International Criminal Court. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Members of the social security system should expect higher benefits and additional assistance under its new charter that was approved by the Congress. Nel Maribohok tells us why. The Bicameral Conference Committee has finalized the proposed law that would change the 21-year-old charter of the Social Security System. The new charter will provide compulsory coverage to overseas Filipino workers. Employers will also shoulder a portion of OFW contributions. The new charter will also increase its loan allotment, such as salary loan as well as retirement benefits. At ngayon makakautang pa sila ng mas malaki for salary loans na up to 25% na ngayon at, uh, pati, uh, at yung housing loans 5%. Gordon says the current 16,000 salary loan will likely to increase to 35,000 pesos. The measure will also lower the penalty for overdue contributions from 3% to 2%. It also promises unemployment insurance. Employees who will lose their jobs will get financial assistance for two months, amounting to half of their monthly salary. 
The SSS will be headed by the Secretary of the Finance who will act as its chairman. Presidential appointees should pass qualifications to get the position and not because of political accommodations. Increase in monthly contributions rest on the discretion of the board of directors and will not require the approval of the president or an endorsement from Congress. The commission members have a term and they have the right to uh, approve whatever uh, increase in benefits there are. The reforms will also give a chance for inactive members to renew their membership. As long as you are a member, you can resume paying your contribution and become active member again so that you can uh, uh, get the full benefit from the system. President Rodrigo Duterte is expected to sign the bill before the end of the year. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. In other news, Congress recalls the Coco Levy bill from the office of the president to introduce an amendment that would save it from being vetoed by President Rodrigo Duterte. According to Senate Majority Floor Leader Juan Miguel Zubiri, they decided to recall the enrolled measure upon learning that it was removed from the list of bills that was to be signed into law by the president. Zubiri says this is due to some contentious provisions that some cabinet members want to be addressed. These include the proposed composition of council that will manage the Coco Levy Fund. Ang ayo kasi ng Malacanang at that time na last night na pinag-usapan namin ay ng mga secretaries na number one yung pondo majority ng uh, uh, grupo na maghawak ng pondo ay civilians. Kasi sabi nila the fund. Uh, although it is a uh, fund of the farmers, but it is uh, uh, in trust with government. The said proposal will be returned to the Bicameral Conference Committee for re-deliberations. <music> Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police launches a manhunt operation against four suspects in the killing of Osami City Regional Trial Court Judge Edmundo Pintap. The PNP also forms a special task group to probe the incident and the judges linked to the Parohinogs who were allegedly involved in the narcotics trade. Lea Ilagan tells us why. The Northern Mindanao Police Authorities are now conducting a parallel investigation for the capture of the suspects in the assassination of Osami City Regional Trial Court Branch 15, Executive Judge Edmundo Pintac on Monday afternoon. Judge Pintak was ambushed by four motorcycle riding gunmen around 4.20 in the afternoon at Purok 2B in Barangay Banadero in Ozami City near the entrance gate of Naomi's Botanical Garden. He suffered multiple gunshot wounds from a 45 caliber pistol after he was shot on board his vehicle. Hindi lamang sa... Uh, directive ng Pangulo, kagad-agad kahapon ay talagang inorganized na even without the directive, inorganized na ng uh, Region 10 ang uh, SITG Pintak. Durana says the special task group will probe all possible angles in the case, including Judge Pintak's link to the Parohinog who were allegedly involved in the narcotics trade. One of the high-profile cases that Judge Pintak was handling was the illegal possession of firearms and illegal drugs involving former Vice Mayor Nova Princess Parohinog and Reynaldo Parohinog Jr. He was also the judge who junked the siblings' petition to attend their father and next of kin's burial who were killed in a raid in July 2017. Definitely, hindi lamang yung mga kaso ng mga Parohinog but also uh, other cases. No? Uh, we should not uh, limit at this point. Uh, doon lang sa mga kaso ng mga Parohinog but uh, alam mo, judge, maraming mga kasong hinahawakan, kaya nga titignan natin uh, kung uh, ano ang mga anggulo. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Camp Krami. President Rodrigo Duterte will closely monitor the case of ambush agents of Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency in Lanao del Sur. According to presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, the president has vowed justice for five PDEA agents who were killed in Barangay Malna, Kapay, Lanao del Sur last October 5. Two others were injured in the ambush. Investigators are eyeing more than five suspects in the killing of five PDEA agents who were allegedly linked 
to the illegal drug trade in the province. The Duterte administration also condoles with the family of the victims. Nakikiramay ang palasyo sa mga pamilya na mga mahal sa buhay na naiwan ng limang Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency personnel na pinatay sa isang ambush sa Dalnao del Sur noong biyernes. Nagsimula ng gumulong ang investigasyon at ang kasong ito ay personal na tututukan mismo ng Pangulo. Makakaasa ang lahat na makakamit ang hustisya sa mga napaslang. Good evening. The International, International Monetary Fund cuts its global economic growth forecast for 2018 and 2019, saying that trade policy tensions and the imposition of import tariffs were taking a toll on commerce while emerging markets struggle with tighter financial conditions and capital outflows. The new forecasts show that a burst of strong growth that was fueled partly by U.S. tax cuts and rising demand for imports was starting to wane. The, the report was released on the Indonesian resort island of Bali, where the IMF and World Bank annual meetings are getting underway. The IMF said in an update to its World Economic Outlook, it was now predicting 3.7% global growth in both 2018 and 2019, down from its July forecast of 3.9% growth for both years. The downgrade reflects a confluence of factors including the introduction of import tariffs between the United States and China, weaker performances by Eurozone countries, Japan and Britain, and rising interest rates that are pressuring some emerging markets with capital outflows, notably Argentina, Brazil, Turkey and South Africa. President Rodrigo Duterte will implement an unimpeded process of rice importation in the country amid surging food inflation. Let's find out why from Rosalicos. President Rodrigo Duterte orders a free market of rice in the country effective Tuesday. This was announced in a press briefing by presidential spokesperson Jare Roque, who was still technically on leave but was compelled to return to work for the said important announcement. According to Roque, the president decided to liberalize the importation of rice to curb food inflation. The matter was decided during the cabinet meeting on Monday. Describing how the cabinet meeting dealt with the issue, Roque says they had an animated discussion with many of them raising their strong views on the need to import rice as the ultimate means by which to rein in inflation as far as food items are concerned. The president um, ordered the unimpeded importation of rice. He wants to flood the market with rice so that even if the price of crude and other oil prices should go up still further, that the people will have access to affordable rice. Secretary Roque notes that since the Philippines has no local source of oil, the government cannot do anything to stop the continuous spike in oil prices. What it can do now, according to Roque, is to increase the supply of rice to lower its price. Habang wala pa tayong sariling langis dito sa Pilipinas, wala tayong magagawa sa pagtaas ng uh, presyo ng langis. Pero ngayon pong pinapayagan na natin na mag-angkat kahit sino, kahit anong uh, quantity ng bigas na at least naasahan po natin at mapapababa natin ang presyo ng bigas na pinakmalapit sa sitmura ng mamamayang Pilipino. The current status quo actually impedes the importation of rice with the National Food Authority as the regulating body when it comes to the maximum volume to be imported. With the President's directive, Roque says anyone will be allowed to import rice as long as they can afford it and will pay tariffs for rice. Secretary Roque clarifies that the directive does not affect the proposed rice tarification measure being pushed in Congress. He explains, however, that there was a consensus among cabinet members to recommend the full liberalization of rice importation to the president as the only solution to address inflation. The secretary, meanwhile, emphasizes that although importers no longer need approval from NFA Council, they still have to secure import permits and the necessary documents before importation as the NFA is already stripped off its power to accredit any importer. When asked about the impact of the president's order to the local farmers, Roque says, Wala naman po dahil mataas nga ang presyo. Pero ang pangako po natin, yung ibabayad na taripa, Isasantabi po natin yan para sa kapakanan ng ating mga lokal na mga magsasaka. 
Rosa Licoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The price of milkfish in local markets rises despite its abundant supply in the country. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources also suspects there is a manipulation in the price of round scad, locally known as galunggong. Ray Palayo tells us why. Milkfish sells at 180 pesos per kilogram in Mega Q Mart in Quezon City. According to most fish vendors, the price of milkfish was only 140 pesos per kilogram some weeks ago. Fish vendor Rex Hampson says the price may have spiked because of shortage in supply. This could be the reason, according to another vendor, Ricky Dumpang, why fewer and fewer people are buying milkfish. However, based on the information provided by the Philippine Milkfish Industry Group to the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, there is an abundant supply of milkfish even in Pangasinan, the major supplier of milkfish in the country. The agency says the spike in prices of milkfish could be an impact of the rising prices of gasoline. BIFAR argues that deliveries usually pass through up to four middlemen before they reach their destination. Farm gate price of bangos in Pangasinan is at 125 to 127 per kilogram. The reported apparent spike in prices could be attributed to fuel cost. Meanwhile, the price of round scud remains at 140 to 160 per kilogram in Mega Q Mart, though vendors observe that it is still higher than the previous price of 120 pesos per kilogram. Galunggong na ano yun, tag, yung para salmon. Yun ang talagang ano. Ito kasing ganitong klase. Lalaki ito eh. Lakal, pag marami kalakal, mababa. Pagka medyo kukonti, siyempre, mataas. Biding din kasi yan sa mga pakiawan eh. Ano, 120 lang ang galunggong dati. Mula nung June yata or May, hindi, hindi na bumaba yung presyo ng galunggong, lalo lang tumaas. But BFAR says the current price of round scud is already lower than its previous selling price of almost 200 pesos per kilogram despite the delays in the delivery of the 17,000 metric tons of imported round scud. The agency suspects there is a manipulation in the price of round scud. Bakit? Hindi pa nga dumarating yung import, uh, gusto natin import Bakit mababa impresyon ng galunggong? 120-130. Merong nag, uh, siguro dyan. At PICC, in order to come up with ways to protect major source of marine products in the country. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Agriculture and Trade and Industry will impose a suggested retail price for chicken and pork amid spiking prices of basic commodities. Joanano tells us why. A memorandum of agreement is poised to be signed by the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Trade and Industry to impose a moving price ceiling for chicken and pork. The said agreement will ensure to cap the difference between the farm gate price and retail price. DTI says the price ceiling would move with the farm gate prices and profit margin. Based on DTI monitoring, the current farm gate price of chicken a kilogram is 75 and 130 pesos for pork. If the 50 peso dressing and trader's fee will be added, retailers would be allowed to sell chicken at 125 pesos. Pork should be sold at 200 pesos per kilogram when added with a slaughtering and trader's fee of 70 pesos. The DTI will release the suggested retail price for chicken every after three days, while the SRP for pork will be decided weekly. After the prices are updated, the agency would meet with market masters to ensure the selling prices of vendors would be aligned with the SRP. The DTI says the effort is in line with the administration's Memorandum Order No. 26, directing concerned agencies to create measures to setting reasonable prices based on farm gate and retail prices. However, some meat retailers are opposing the measure. Hindi po kami papayag, madam. Depende po sa bigay nila sa amin na puhunan. Kasi pati expenses namin, kasama pa dyan, kukunin pa dyan lahat. Siyempre, ibabasin din namin sa kanya, sa puhunan namin yan. Eh. Siyempre, pag ang puhunan namin ay 190, bibintila namin ang 200. Tapos, eh, ibabayad ang pwesto, magbabayad sa alalay. Ah, wala na sobra, nung kukulangin kami. Wala na mangyayari doon sa amin. If the retailer keeps selling above the SRP, the DTI would issue a notice of violation and a penalty would be imposed depending on the size of the business. 
maari pang mawala ng negosyo yung mga retailers natin na nagsasamantala kasi isasama na natin nun sa kaso ang request sa LGU na i-revoke ang business permit nila. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The search for the country's third major telecommunications company has attracted five firms so far. The Department of Information and Communications Technology admits the growing interest was surprising. Monoxon tells us why. Five companies so far have acquired bid documents after the government opened the selection process for the third major telecommunications company in the country. According to the Department of Information and Communications Technology, among the interested bidders is a devil-based internet service provider and consortium that includes the company of former Ilocos Sur Governor Chavit Singson. Other firms who express interest include the Udena Corporation, Norwegian telecom operator Telenor, and another company whose name is being withheld. DICT Secretary Eliseo Rio says two more companies are scheduled to secure bid documents this week. But to have uh, five or six joining you, talagang, uh, that shows interest. No? Uh, at least, dito makita yung term of reference na matagal na naming kinakraft uh, uh, with four public uh, consultations, ay nakikita naman nila na, well, uh, open, uh, transparent, and fair. No? Kung hindi, wala, sasali. No? DICT is giving bidders about a month to prepare their offers set to be submitted until November 7 this year. Other potential participants have said they are evaluating the selection documents, which were made available Monday on the NTC website. LCS Group and Tier 1 says they intend to bring world-class telecommunications services across the archipelago. So maglalagay kami in every town and every barangay island para matulungan yung pinakamalayo uh, at saka mga, mga uh, yung hindi nakakatikim ng magandang uh, service. So, yun ang number one na object namin. So, ginagawa na namin lahat yun. DICT will select the third major telco player based on the highest committed level of service model. The three major elements to be scored are population coverage, internet speed, and investment over the five-year commitment period. The goal of the selection process is to determine which company or consortium will receive a set of mobile frequencies. It can use this to provide voice calls, text messaging, and mobile internet putting it in direct competition with the services offered by the existing duopoly of PLDT Incorporated and Globe Telecom. With the current pace, the government expects to name the winning bidder by November or December 2018. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque admits he has no information on the state of health of President Rodrigo Duterte. The palace official also remains undecided on whether to stay in government or run in the upcoming polls. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Acting Interior Secretary Eduardo Año and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo claimed that President Rodrigo Duterte is cancer-free. The two officials said they heard the president said so during their cabinet meeting in Malacanang last night. However, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque cannot confirm nor deny this statement as he admits he has no information on the health condition of the president. I'm saying I'm not privy to information and what the president I think said yesterday was he wants his medical information to remain confidential and private. Roque is also confident that Duterte will tell the public himself if he has serious illness. But for now, the Malacanang remains firm on the right of the president to confidentiality as long as he remains mom on the issue. I'm not in a position to say that, but I think the decision was the president will comply with the constitutional provision that unless he has a serious illness, he wants to treat his medical condition as being private and covered by confidentiality. Meanwhile, Roque has yet to come up with a final decision on whether to push through with his senatorial bid or accept the offer of the president to be the press secretary. He says the matter is still being discussed with President Duterte. 
Roque promises to give his final decision next week before he travels to China for a conference from October 11 to 15. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The draft federal charter authored by House Speaker Gloria Arroyo skips Vice President Lenny Robredo in that transition period. The proposal also seeks to remove the term limits of lawmakers. Grace Kassin tells us why. If President Rodrigo Duterte is unable to preside over the country's transition to the new system of government, the Senate President is the next in line and not Vice President Lenny Robredo. This is based on the resolution of both Houses No. 15 authored by House Speaker Gloria Arroyo. House Committee on Constitutional Amendments Chairman Vicente Veloso explains they decided to skip VP Robredo due to the election protest against her filed by former Senator Bongbong Marcos. We wouldn't know who the Vice President would be then. Would it be Robredo? Would it be Bongbong Marcos? But look at the uncertainty. I've been a jurist for a long time and there is no certainty when it comes to finality of decision. But Albay Representative Ed Salagman questions this provision. As of now, there is a vice president and that election protest will have to take its course. But uh, meanwhile, we have an elected, duly elected vice president who is incumbent and should not be deprived of uh, uh, the constitutional right to succeed to the presidency. Akbayan Partilist Representative Tom Villarin also says the administration might be trying to impede Robredo's succession, especially with the president's current state of health. The problem now is uh, you have uh, the health condition of the president, which is uh, again inami naman ni presidente. And of course, the president has always been saying that uh, he does not like uh, Vice President Robredo. Uh, to succeed him. No? The draft federal constitution also seeks to remove the term limit for senators and congressmen. Congressman Veloso says term limits breed political dynasty. To, may term limit tayo, katulad ng senador ngayon, hanggang dalawang terms lang sila. Siguro ang sisikat ngayon, babasahin natin sa history books, ang magagaling na legislators ngayon would be Mrs. Tolentino, Mrs. Jokno, yung mga asawa, because with term limit, magkakaroon ka ng dynasty. Ipapasa mo doon sa pwede magpatuloy sa trabaho mo. Bayan Muna Party List Representative Carlos Arati said in a statement that the removal of lawmakers' term limits is for GMA to still run in Congress and remain in power. He said their group will do everything to stop the passage of this measure. I, I, I merely put a... The only thing I added was a provision that instead of establishing the federal states, uh, there's a mechanism to establish federal states. All the other provisions were already submitted by the CONCOM and everybody else. So that's the only difference of your version now? That's the only thing I added. To, to make it my version. Under Section 2, Article 17 of the draft charter change, any move to extend the terms of President Duterte and Vice President Lenny Robredo beyond June 30, 2022 is prohibited. The first national and local election under federal system of government will be conducted on second Monday of May 2022. Solons admit there is a very low chance that the Senate will pass its version of the proposal, but the House Committee on Constitutional Amendments says it will do its part to pass the resolution on time to start the transition period on May 2019. The lower house is now deliberating the draft charter in the plenary for a second reading. Grace Cassid, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The draft federal charter authored by House Speaker Gloria Arroyo skips Vice President Lenny Robredo in a transition period. The proposal also seeks to remove the term limits of lawmakers. Nel Maribok tells us why. Senate leaders are not keen to tackle the proposal seeking to revise or amend the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Senator says they have no time to consider the bill, although the lower house has approved in the committee level the draft federal constitution authored by House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. We don't have any more time. We have the budget coming up. So the whole November, December, we'll just be discussing and approving the budget. Wala pa tayo sa federal, malayo malayo pa tayo dyan. In the Senate, hindi pinag-uusapan. It's not in our radar. 
Uh, kaya pagdating dito, wala na kaming panahon. Wala na kaming panahon in order to look at it. And it's, so that's why I said it's dead on arrival here. It's simply because we have no more time. Without even looking at the merits of which I have very serious reservations personally. Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drilon says that if Arroyo's draft federal charter will be transmitted to the Senate, he will surely block the bill due to its questionable provisions. These include the line of succession where the vice president was omitted. Senate President Vicente Soto III has expressed the same sentiment. Because of time constraints, I really doubt if we will be able to consider it. Soto says the House version of federal charter may possibly be tackled in the Senate next year. The Senate Committee on Constitutional Amendments has yet to release its committee report on the proposal to revise the charter. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. And thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Wine News. I'm Angelo Paz III. Good evening.